Hey everyone, Chris here for Midwest Coaster Fans. Uh, I got a special show on here. Uh, just doing a quick overview. I know many of you guys are dealing with the winter storm today, or you might be dealing with other issues. So I'm talking about planning your trips, tips and tricks. I'm going to go over a variety of different things today. Uh, talk about a different, a variety of different subject matters. A lot of you might be new to trip planning, or you guys might think you're experts. Uh, but you don't know everything you need to know about how to plan the perfect trip, whether to a park, whether to a city. Uh, there's a lot of things the industry doesn't want to tell you about. And I'm not talking about the theme park industry. I'm talking about the travel industry. And a lot of the things that they will use to try to gimmick you into buying more expensive things early on. So they make more profit, more money on everything. When in reality, what you're doing is you're spending more money and it's costing you more money on trips. Now, I'm going to go over, I'm going to break down different things because uh, many of you guys might not be aware of different things. And also, when we do future videos on Midwest Coaster fans, I'm going to talk about how much the trips might have cost us uh, so you can plan for the perfect trip. Because I don't stay at Motel 6s and stuff like that. Uh, I actually stay at two and a half, three star, four star hotels a lot and Airbnbs. And the reason, the way I'm able to do this is I plan, I look, I research, uh, I'm always traveling. So I always travel every other weekend. I live in Orlando, but I travel back to Indiana. So I know what to look for. I do a lot of coaster trips along with my team. And we just wanted to do this video because you guys are probably sitting inside maybe today or later on tonight, you might need something to watch because you want to, you know, plan a trip because you're sick of the cold weather. Uh, you're sick of the snow. And by, you know, a lot of you guys are probably getting a lot of snow right now in the Midwest or even across the country. Um, fortunately, where I'm at is the only warm place besides California. Uh, but I've even seen bad temperatures down in, you know, Texas today. And they're calling for like over a foot of snow in the Great Lakes region. So, be safe out there if you're traveling and doing so forth. Stay on your computer, watch this, get some hints, get some information uh, for the future here. But yeah, we're talking about what the overlay was about at the beginning of the show, which we're planning for coaster trips, tips and tricks. Um, and this will be on podcasts as well. Uh, so I'll put it on the audio version so you kind of review it a lot. Uh, I take a lot more trips than my team does. They do a lot of driving trips, but uh, they did want to join as well. So what we're going to do is this is going to be kind of a start of a series. And then we'll do a podcast later on to kind to up that. And uh, and I apologize for the late start on that. I was busy taking care of a couple of things. So I, had, I started the show a couple minutes late. So I do apologize on that. And I uh, hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday. I know Mondays suck. But at the same time... Uh, you know, it is what it is, right? But there's a variety of different parks, so I'm going to narrow it down. I'm going to start off with uh, Kings Island. And uh, I'm going to kind of break down the first part of how we save money on trips, which is uh, going to be... Sorry about that mute. <laughs> My daughter is asking me a question. Anyways, uh, I'm going to break down like what the actual cost of a season pass will cost you. Now, I always recommend if it's just a small park, you just get a regular pass. But if it's a chain park like Six Flags, Cedar Fair, SeaWorld, things like that, I recommend getting their highest tier gold pass. Uh, I don't ever recommend getting the dining deals unless you plan on going a lot. Just because you could save the same amount of money. You could save the same amount of money if you basically just buy a day of like I do because I go to a variety of different parks. So I wouldn't utilize the food pass at one single park since I go to a lot. Now, if you do that, by all means, but I'm going to break down the platinum pass. And if you divide it into 12 months, what it would cost you because you could look at the price of admission per day and why it's a better deal if you buy that. So I'm going to break it down. I'm going to talk about season passes and daily ticket prices or individual park passes. Talk about plane tickets or renting a car. Also, hotel, Airbnbs, or camping if you choose to. 
I'm break it all down, the different sites that I use, the different uh, equations that I'm able to use. And with that, what I do is I break it down and I'm able to budget it out. Now, I usually budget out trips, usually a month in advance minimum. And that allows me to set aside money and to plan accordingly. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the passes because uh, many of you guys probably use season passes, I imagine. Uh, this is like the first trick of running a channel and running content uh, related to different things. Or if you're a coaster enthusiast and you want to save money, I do not recommend buying Fastlane for Cedar Fair. Uh, just because I think it's a money crunch and a lot of things, unless you plan on only going weekends. I recommend if you're planning out trips, plan accordingly and plan to go during the week and not weekends. So weekends, everybody has off. Saturdays and Sundays are probably the worst time to go. So plan your trips accordingly to go uh, during the week and avoid holidays, avoid Fridays, Saturdays, sometimes Sundays. Sometimes Sundays in certain parks might be less busy. Um, but let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and bring up over here on this map here. PlayStation fan one. Uh, nice comment there. <laughs> And I'm doing this show live, so you'll probably hear my daughter in the background. So I might be answering questions if she asks me anything. Uh, but I, okay, so this should bring it up where you guys can see it. If you can't see it, let me know. Actually, I could go to full screen on this and kind of talk about it. But now, uh, you'll see it on my side here. So I think that's a better view than the other one, which would be right here. And you'll see more of me than you will the screen. So let's go back to this. Uh, so. Breaking this down here, so right now, Kings Island's promoting this deal. So they're promoting five easy payments of $18. Now, remember, the Gold Pass only covers one park. So if you plan on visiting more than one park in the Cedar Fair chain, do not go with the Gold Pass. The Gold Pass is a waste of money, and you are wasting your time on this pass. Sorry, my thing's kind of acting up over here. But let's say I want to go buy now. So I'm going to break down this thing and I'm going to break down the map because the math because I have my calculator right here. So you can buy it for $115 for that. Now, like I said, instead of buying that, go with the platinum pass and go with your home park. You want to because you're going to have to do it. So let's say $202. You buy it for $202, right? Divided by 12. Because there are parks that are open. That only comes down to, guys, $16 a month. $16 a month is what it's going to cost you. And I'm not talking about the payments. I'm talking about if you were to pay outright, it would be $16 a month it's costing you to. So if you look at the daily admission here, so I'll go ahead and let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. I'm having issues with this thing operating correctly. There we go. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Uh, so I'm going to bring up the daily ticket. So this is where you find, uh, I don't care about the fun day sales. So it's $41 right now. So you would pay $41. So let's just put it that way. If you visit the park four times in a season or five times in a season, just for one person, that pays for itself. So that Platinum Pass pays for itself. And remember, the Gold Pass, if you just plan on visiting one park, that's going to pay, it's $115 a person. That's going to pay for itself. And I mean, in two and three visits, that's paying for itself. This other one's paying for itself, which I highly recommend, which is the Platinum Pass for it. That's going to pay for itself in five trips to any park in the United States that's owned by Cedar Fair. And, uh, you know, Six Flags is even cheaper. I'll bring that up here in a second. But the best deal that you want to do is do season passes. And a lot of these places right now, as you can see on the screen here, uh, they're going to allow you to do monthly deals on here. So you'll see, like, let me zoom in on this a little more so you can see a little bit better. Uh, the more I zoom, obviously the harder it's going to get, but you can see right here, these are all payment plan eligible. 
and that'll break it down. So if you can't afford it a month, this would be $32 a month and they're doing five payments. They used to do 10 payments. I'm not sure why they're only doing five this year at Cedar Fair or $18 a month. So you'll be doing a down payment plus five additional payments. But this is all the perks you get for it. And uh, that's why I recommend the Platinum because you get all that. Now, we can go to Six Flags here, and I'll show you the difference in prices here. We'll just say it doesn't really matter. Because Six Flags, yes, we'll just say Illinois or uh, Missouri. We'll just go to Missouri. So... Thanks for whoever's still joining me in this. I'm I'm showing the difference in season passes. So I went over Cedar Fair already. Uh, so it looks like three visits for the gold pass. It pays for itself or five visits if you get the platinum pass and you get to go to any park. Now I'm going to show you the difference in price with Six Flags over here. So Six Flags right now. Now Six Flags, in my opinion, is this... I mean, I don't know why it's got volume on that, but you can see right here. So they're promoting monthly and I don't know why, but let's say you, I don't even know what's going on here, but anyways, you can kind of see they're kind of fluctuating their prices and making it believe that it costs more than that. This is a marketing gimmick. They always run sales on these. That's why I like Cedar Fair better than Six Flags because Cedar Fair doesn't play none of those games on there. If you notice, Cedar Fair plays a lot of game or Six Flags plays a lot of games when it comes to memberships. They're trying to promote monthly because on monthly they could get more out of you, kind of. Uh, but you'll you'll usually order a bigger like quantity. But let's say if I want to buy the Gold Plus right now, if I want to buy it outright, which Six Flags almost tries to get you to avoid it outright. Like, why am I, why am I having to pay it monthly? Like, I just want to buy it outright. Well, they make it a pain in the butt to buy it outright now. But let's just say you want to buy it outright. They want you to pay monthly. They don't advertise the actual price. So it looks like Six Flags has kind of gone away from that whole buying it outright if you could afford it. And they're just promoting monthly. And I'm not sure why. It's kind of odd to me, but I guess it would boost their sales up for season passes and make their shareholders seem like their parks have more than what they do. And let's go to SeaWorld. So let's just go to let's go to SeaWorld Orlando. Okay. Uh, if we go to SeaWorld Orlando, you can see right here annual passes. So we'll bring up annual passes. And don't ever go with hotel packages. I don't care what anybody says. It will not save you money. Uh, that's the biggest gimmick in the business. Um, you're better off researching and knowing what you're getting. Uh, so we are like right here. Um, you'll see right here. Here's the price, $11.75 a month or $141. With SeaWorld, if you plan on going to all of them, you need the Platinum Annual Pass. Which the Platinum Annual Pass is $369. It's a little more than... Cedar Fair, but most of their parks are open year round. Or that comes down to thirty dollars a month, three sixty nine. Of course, they want to ask a question because they're being. But if, as you see with this, you get six free guest tickets, and you can transfer them. Like in Florida, you can use it at Busch Gardens Tampa or that. You get fifty percent in in house merchandise. And you get one free skip the line pass and 50% off of it. So if you wanted to purchase that. So this is the best deal right here is the platinum. So this $30 a month that it costs, in my opinion, is not a lot of money. Because when you're paying $30 a month, you got to think about it. If you go to a SeaWorld park, they're priced at $91 every time you enter per day. Or if you get a two-day pass, it costs you like $100. So why not spend the extra money? You get to go 12 months out of the year and as much as you want. And plus, you go in the park, you save 20% on food, 50% on merchandise. So you're never spending the full amount. Also, I also, if I want to do quick queue, what I'm able to do is purchase that for 50% off. So like when I went like a month ago with Zach from our team down here at uh, Bush Gardens Tampa, we paid $9 per quick queue. 
Now, obviously, that's going to fluctuate depending on what they plan, uh, what they think the crowd's going to be for the day and so forth and things of that nature. Uh, but these are the best deals in the industry. So annual passes are something that you want to buy. And especially if you have a local park, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Like I think Indiana Beach is like $60. Kings Island is like $60. Things like that. So, you know, the visit itself, it's like a daily admission tickets. Like, you know, in general, that's going to cost you right around like probably 30 to $35. So that season pass pays in like two visits. And then you get, you know, discounts associated with that, like frontline parking, Kentucky Kingdom has different things. You might get invited to events uh, like with SeaWorld and Cedar Fair, stuff like that. Sometimes pass holders get preview days. Also, when the new ride opens, you'll be the first ones to be able to ride it. This is also how us YouTubers and things of that nature, if we're not invited to the media event, which usually we are, if we are, like our channel is, but let's say you're not and you're trying to start up your YouTube channel. You could actually cover the same amount of stuff almost, or you want to join like a coaster club, which I'll talk about that at the end. That'll help save you on different events. And a lot of times Ace gets invited before any other coaster club. Uh, so you get to get invited the same day as anybody who's on a media list. So you get to ride the coaster right away. So obviously the bigger parks like Disney, Universal, the media is probably going to get invited before. Ace, but like Cedar Fair, for example, uh, before Orion, you know, uh, opening got postponed because of COVID. Uh, not only were all of his channels invited to the media day, but also Ace was invited to it. So remember that if you're looking at that. Uh, so like I said, the annual pass is the best deal. What parks want to try to get you with and what a lot of people out there that don't usually go to parks a lot don't understand. If you pay outright, you're wasting your money. Now, if you only go to now, if you only go to a park like Disney and so forth, like one time and you go for a week, OK, it doesn't make sense to spend, you know, thirteen hundred dollars for an annual pass. Universal, the same thing. But most of the parks that have chains like Cedar Fair, Six Flags and SeaWorld, if you could if you're anywhere in the country, you could visit any of their parks using that pass. So it saves you money, especially when you have a family and you're looking for cheap entertainment. You could go with the gold pass and go to. Kings Island as many times as you want. Even if you just went, you know, four times during the summer, your money is well spent on that. So I'm going to get off this whole past thing because I just wanted to bring that up. But the next thing I want to talk about in planning a trip, and you guys probably know I'm going to talk about it here, is air travel. Now, uh, this is the biggest gimmick in the industry right now, uh, but I did find a couple of sites that you guys are able to utilize. So uh, for those of you who stayed with me on this, thank you. And if you have to go somewhere, don't worry. This is going to post later on YouTube and Facebook. And it'll also be on podcast format. So you could actually view it or listen to it while you're driving. So, and then our team's going to cover more on the different tips and tricks that they do in a later podcast. But uh, so I'm going to go over air travel. So I use a variety of different tools. So I use Google I use, uh, sorry, I use Google Flights. That's my main one. And I use Hopper now. I don't use anything else. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, Google Flights is pretty good at finding the most correct price. However, you have to watch the gimmicks in the industry. And if you've paid attention this long, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. There are gimmicks in the industry that force you to buy a more expensive plane ticket than what you have to. So I'm going to show you this. This is going to blow your mind. I'm going to start off with Hopper. I'm going to go to Google Flights. Hopper is by far my favorite source to use now, and I'll explain why here in a second. Hopper has something where I can freeze a flight now. So let's hope it goes to the actual Hopper site. So check this. It's not going to let me do this here. So Hopper is basically an app. So. Uh, I'll go over it here and then I wish I could show you guys on here. It's not going to let me show it on here. Hmm. So what I'll do is um, I'll go over Hopper a little later. I'll go on a different uh, set. But what, what, so what I do is, and I'll bring a screenshot of this. Let me do a screenshot on my phone real fast of this. Uh, but let's say I want to book 
a flight, let's say, because we have, you know, a bunch of stuff going on. Um, many of you guys are from the Midwest. So you want to book a flight from Chicago to Orlando, Florida. But let's say you don't get paid till Friday, right? So I don't get paid till Friday, but I want this flight today and I've only got so much money in my account, uh, but I don't want the price to change. So like, I want to book a trip for, and I apologize for the background noise, but let's say I want to book a trip for May. I, you know, I've decided that I want to book a trip for May or March. Let's just say March. March is not a good month to travel, by the way. To Orlando or any spots with spring break because ticket prices are going to be outrageous. But let's say I want to fly out on Monday and I want to get back on a Friday. So I'm going to bring the screenshot to you and I'm going to show you exactly what this app does. Because I'm going to have to do screenshot overlays, unfortunately. But I did screenshot overlay on that. Uh, so... I'm able to view the flights and I'll show you the screenshot here in a second, just to give you an example. And thanks for staying with me, guys. I apologize. I thought I could do this online, but Hopper is one of those weird apps that you can't do it online. Okay, so I did screenshots of this. I'm going to send this on here so you guys can kind of see how it works. Download this app, by the way. Download this app. This app will save you a ton of money, I'm telling you. I use it on my trips. If I can't afford the full ticket right away and I need to book a ticket, I do this. And what happens is you'll see it here in just a second. I'm downloading this so you guys can see this. So let me bring this out of here. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second, guys. Thanks for staying with me on this. I promise you the rest of this will be a lot, lot better. So uh, we are here. I'm going to do an overlay here. Uh, so I'm going to go back to me on here, okay? Uh, so you'll see my uh, ugly face. I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to bring this over here so you kind of see what I'm talking about here. And it's got a load on here. So some of these apps nowadays are just crazy because they don't let you um, do it online. They want you to do it on your phone. You want to know why that is? Location services. Location services. They can tell how many times based on your IP address that you've been looking at something, which causes price increases in air travel and so forth. That's why Google has a cool thing on your app. If you have Google Chrome, it's called incognito mode. Incognito mode doesn't allow them to see your location, which could save you money on flights. But let's go ahead and bring up the overlay on this. Can you guys see that? It's kind of blurry. Okay, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Uh, so we bring up the main screen here. So I did a flight from Chicago to Orlando. You can see it right here. And it says you can see your price, which happens to be $49, was the cheapest price this thing could find. You could buy now, which if you buy now, and I'm looking at this right here because it's kind of blurry on the screen, so I do apologize on that. But if you buy now for this ticket and you don't care about your times or anything like that, you could buy it for $49 or for a $24 deposit which is refundable and you could apply it to another airplane ticket. You just have to use it within the next seven days. So it is always going to tell you how long that price freeze is good for. As soon as you freeze that price and you pay the $24 deposit, it holds that $49. No matter if that flight goes up in price or not, they will pay the difference. And that is great about Hopper. And no, this is not a promotion. I do not get paid to talk about Hopper. I do this because I like Hopper. And uh, <laughs> thank you, PlayStation fan. What's up, Stealing Wood Riders? So if I go to the next one here, uh, there we go. We're going to go to the next one here. 
So if I choose to opt out of the cheapest flight and I want to know what flights are flying out, it's going to give me a list here. Can you, you guys probably see this on here better than I can. And you're going to see right here, it's going to say like $49, $332. I don't know why it says best quality. That's kind of expensive. But anyways, you're going to see that. And then you choose one of them. So I chose the top one, which is a 7.45 a.m. Then it's going to take me to this screen over here. And I could freeze it for $24. I pay the price. It's guaranteed I'm going to have that flight. So that is the great thing, like I said, about Hopper. I highly recommend it for air travel on hotels. I don't so much recommend it because it's a little confusing. Uh, and I'll go over that here in a second on which one I actually use for hotels. There's a couple of them. Or you can use Airbnb or you can use whatever you use. Uh, but like I said on here, let me go back to the screen here. Use Hopper. Hopper is an amazing app. And without Hopper, I wouldn't have been able to do some of these trips I've been doing the last month and a half. And sometimes I just pay it outright if I have the money. But if I know the flight's going to go up by Friday because I'm traveling the following Friday. I purchase it on Wednesday with the deposit, and then I pay for the full price on Friday, and I don't have to worry about losing that flight. Do not wait till the last minute, though. I learned a hard lesson on that. Do not wait till the last minute on it because the flight might book up fully. So as soon as you know you can pay that full rest of the price, pay the full rest of the price. Okay, let's go into another one that I use. Called Google Flights. This one's really easy to use. Uh, you guys probably have used it yourself. And let me zoom in out a little bit on this. This is oh, okay. It is zoomed out. So if you want to go, let's say I want to go to Chicago, but I want to go to Orlando, or let's just say I want to go. I don't know San Antonio, right? I want to go to. Yes, to Texas. But I want to go, and you can see it on here on the map. So you see here, uh, let me zoom in so you guys can see what happens. So it's going to show you, and this is why I like this. I use Hopper just to, so what I do is I look at flight prices. So I'll compare them between Hopper, and I'll compare them between Hopper and Google Flights. Google Flights will tell me the cheapest price, and Southwest Airlines is not on Hopper. Southwest Airlines is finally on here, but the prices will not show. So that's another thing. I have to look at Southwest sometimes, which they don't tend to be the cheapest. Well, let's say here I want to fly, and the San Antonio is a little more expensive. Let's say I want to fly out on March 12th, but I want to get back on the 16th. Okay. So this is what it'll show you. It'll show you all the flights on here. So a lot of you guys might be a little confused on where to look for air travel at. Don't go to Priceline unless you plan on not wanting to choose your flight and you want to use that service, which I've done before when you don't care about the time you're flying out. It'll tell you that there's a cheap deal available. And I got American Airlines for like $30 one time for one way. Um, but I'm going to drink a little bit of water here. But Google Flights is your best resource on this. You go over here, you're able to search the flights. And if you're only planning on traveling with a personal bag, I'm going to tell you a, a trick because a lot of people down on Spirit and Frontier. Um, but besides the seats being uncomfortable and people being packed in a little bit tighter, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. If you have a two hour or less flight, I highly recommend it just because it's going to save you a lot of money that you use further on your trip. You might be able to use that extra money to get a nicer hotel. Uh, maybe upgrade your little rental car when you have it or spend more money in the park. So it's all about budgeting and traveling. So let's go on here. And thanks for whoever's watching live. I'm writing down all the stuff I'm telling you. So you can see here on United. Now you have to watch United. I learned this the hard way yesterday when I flew back from Chicago back to Orlando. They have something called economy basic and regular economy always get economy or else you have to get this little tiny personal bag but as you can see united is the cheapest one so you're going to look at the price here uh, and then they're going to tell you if you do a return trip you can use frontier beware on this because if you have a carry-on bag with united 
with your plane ticket, and then you return with Frontier. Frontier charges for a carry-on, so you have to be cautious about that. However, if you look at the price difference on it, that carry-on is going to cost you about $25. So if that's a long that's a long time to wait just to save money. You also have to look at this too. It'll tell you the exact layover and stuff like that. So it'll show you how long you have to get late, how long your layover is, and it'll show you the amount of leg room you have, which I'm tall and like six foot two, so it's a pain in the butt. But if that's it if that's an option for you and time's not a virtue and you're okay with waiting time in Las Vegas, which isn't a bad place to have downtime at. Mm hmm. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is probably your quickest flight here. Yeah. It's a scary doll. Okay. Yeah, you have this right here. So, you guys see what I'm talking about here. So, you have economy here. So I'm kind of showing you different tips and tricks down here. So if, like I said, time's not a virtue, you got to pay attention to those layovers, though. A lot of people are always surprised by layovers. Direct flights are sometimes more expensive, but if time's a restriction on you, it could be better for you. But you notice that those are the cheapest flights. So uh, Google Flights is going to organize it to the cheapest on top all the way. You could organize it by time you want to leave, airline you want to travel with. Uh, but as I, I decided I'm going to, for this case scenario, I'm going to choose United, okay? Because I don't want to go through all that mess. I just want to deal with it. I want a, um, a flight that takes less time. And then it tells you right here, which is ridiculous. Remember, you see this here. If you could just do a carry-on and a regular personal bag, like a little bag, do that. Do not do a check bag. These check bags are ridiculous with some of these airlines now. If you plan on spending that on a check bag, look at Southwest Airlines for your traveling. Because Southwest gives you two free check bags, a carry-on, and a personal bag. So remember that if you're traveling heavy, Southwest is the airline that I recommend the most. Because with Southwest, you can get two check bags as long as they don't exceed 50 pounds. You get one carry-on bag and one personal bag. That's four items. So you got to look at that as well. So if you don't plan on uh, traveling heavy and it's just you or it's uh, you're you're just not traveling heavy at all uh, you if you just plan on bringing a bag use spirit or frontier if you plan on bringing a carry-on you just use the economy class because you don't need all the other nonsense southwest is kind of taking advantage of lately the people that want to check in bags so they've kind of increased their prices especially over the pandemic unless they can't sell flights and then they'll drop the fares uh, also, you have to understand with Southwest, if you're going from hub to hub, it's cheaper or any airline. If you're going from United Hub, which is in Chicago, to another hub, which could be somewhere else, your flights are always going to be cheaper through those hubs. American Airlines, usually the hub or Delta Airlines, the hub is, you know, in the Midwest is like Cincinnati. It's like a small hub, but the main hub is in Atlanta. United, it's in Chicago. Uh, and then, you know, Orlando has a couple hubs, but it's mainly JetBlue. Frontier, Spirit, Southwest. So they're going to be cheaper flying into that. Uh, but going back to your airport might be more expensive because it's not a hub. And all that means is basically all their maintenance and everything's done at that hub. And all their operations are strictly done out of the hub. So, so we've gone over that part here. So I'm going to book the trip, right? So I'm booking with United here. And going to take me to a separate window, which this thing ever loads. Okay, so I'm going to close out of here, and then I'm going to bring up another, I'm going to bring up another screen here so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. So you look at right here, as soon as you go to book the ticket, Google Flights is going to link you straight to where you can purchase it from United directly. So United is going to try to sell you some crap. 
And then it's going to tell you if you do economy plus, you get a little more features like more leg room and stuff. So if you wanted to pay that, go ahead. And then you get a standard check bag for an extra 72. So you get more leg room and you get a standard check bag for 72. So you got to look at all these options here. But let's just say I want to continue. I don't want any of these options. Oh, look at that. Looks like the airlines are now, and I just found this out here. Creepy now. But if you look right here, I guess now they allow you to hold. They allow you to. I don't know what Fairlock is here. Let's look at this real fast. I'm learning something new here. Okay, so you can do a fair lock now. So that's going to save you more money. If airlines are starting to do this, that means they caught on to the gimmick that Ho uh, Hopper was doing, and now they're doing their own to prevent you from using a third-party source, basically. So pay attention to that. That's something new I've just seen. That's definitely that's definitely something new. So they have a fair lock. You can lock it in for three days or seven days. You can purchase it directly from the airline, which... A lot of times they'll save you more money anyways, because sometimes there's hidden fees with Priceline uh, with different places. I like how Google Flights connects you directly to it. Also with Hopper, you guys got to understand, I use it, but I do not pay those extra. So at the end menu, it's going to ask you if you want to pay an extra $9 for this, an extra $9 for that. I always say no to both. I figure if they're offering a service, they should offer a service. I shouldn't have to tip them for it. They're making the money off that that airplane ticket anyways. So don't let them fool you with those gimmicks of, oh, well, yeah, if you uh, we're providing a service for you, so you need to, uh, you know, you need to help us out and uh, pay for the service extra. Go ahead and tip us for it because we're, I mean, you're still doing all the work. The only thing they're doing is they're, they're bringing it up on software, which is probably a similar software you're going to use for Google. And no problem, David Ellis. That, like I said, I travel a lot, but they're trying to hit you with a service. You got to remember these third-party sites make money. So they sell a flight through their site. Google Flights makes money too. Google makes money off it. Maybe not as much as the others because they connect you directly to the actual website. They're making money off of that sale of that ticket. So don't let them bullcrap you with, oh, well, you should do this. No, they're making money off of that. So don't think you owe them anything. You don't owe those airlines anything. You're the traveler. You do what you need to do. But so that's that's a little gist of it. So Google Flights, Hopper, only two I use. Now, if you use Google Flights and you get an itinerary and you notice the flight's cheap and you can't afford it, now they're doing Fairlock. Any airline who's participating in this, take advantage of it. Lock it in if you can't get it right away and you can't afford it till Friday or you can't afford it until a week from now. That gives you seven more days to save up more money for a flight that you're actually going to want. I I don't really re recommend Spirit and Frontier unless you're trying to you know travel on a budget. But like I said, there's nothing wrong with Spirit or Frontier. It's just that their restrictions, their planes are more crowded, less leg room, and it's a no gimmick airline. So anything you want extra is going to cost you money. So. Remember those fine details. Uh, they don't hide it. You just have to read the details. Okay. So from there, we're going to go on to another one here, which is going to be hotels. I know many of you guys probably take hotels. Uh, some people use Airbnbs. Which is cool. If you use an Airbnb. That's cool as well. Uh, and I'll go over, I mean, Airbnbs, in my opinion, during COVID are kind of outrageously expensive. But if you want to pay the money for it, go ahead. Uh, some places aren't charging an enormous amount of money for Airbnbs. But my problem with Airbnb pretty much is that Airbnb is allowing these people that host now to add a stupid cleaning fee. And a lot of these places aren't being cleaned the way they say they're being cleaned. So you might be paying 40, 50 extra dollars for a cleaning fee on top of the normal rate. 
So you could be paying a hundred over a hundred dollars for, you know, some, something small. Um, or you could pay per night at a hotel and you're going to have the same thing. And they're all doing cleaning standards like that. I don't like spirit of frontier coaster key says I prefer jet blue of all airlines. Uh, the, I've heard JetBlue is good. The problem is they're limited destinations and they're limited routes. Okay. Yeah. JetBlue I've heard is a good airline too. The problem with JetBlue is like I said, they're not in all airports and then they have limited uh, routes. So that's one thing to look at if you can. Uh, Google Flights is going to bring up that route, but I don't think JetBlue brings up the prices either. And, uh, Like I said, I prefer American Airlines out of all of them because their service has been great during the pandemic. I like United as well. Just don't get economy basic like I did yesterday. I had to downsize my bag to a smaller bag and leave a couple things behind back home or where my parents are at. And uh, I didn't know it because I purchased it on Hopper accidentally and Hopper didn't tell me that it was economy basic. So also pay attention to that too. If I can't secure it, it's like Delta. They're nicer than American and not United. Yeah, Delta's pretty nice too, but Delta's got some weird layovers going on during the pandemic where their layovers might be like three, four hours and their routes are taking longer. So uh, I've found that American Airlines hasn't been that bad. I like the fact that United loads from back to front now. And I think Delta does the same thing. I'm not a fan of how American Airlines still does loading based on certain classes which i think is totally stupid during a pandemic and uh during a pandemic all the airlines should be loading back to front anyways you think you don't want people overlapping but whatever um i'm not going to get into all the specifics of that because that's a whole nother ball game uh but if we're looking at hotels here uh thanks for the thanks for the advice coaster key on that as well i i, I plan on traveling jet blue i just if I do JetBlue, it's probably going to be the Northeast because that's the cheapest routes from Orlando. And yeah, I do live in Orlando. I moved down here to be able to cover everything since Orlando is like the hub and flights are cheap out of here and I can still get back home for cheap. So I'm going to, I'm actually, okay, so. Okay, so it's logging me under my name here. Obviously, you guys know my name's Chris. So I use Priceline for hotels because I'm a VIP member. You can use hotels.com. Remember, you have to stay a certain amount of days before you're going to get a free night. Uh, you could, like I said, you could go to you could go to TripAdvisor. You could look up hotels on TripAdvisor. Uh, you could go to Expedia. I use Priceline because I use Priceline all the time. I'm a VIP member now. Um, Priceline gives me so many deals on here. Uh, so I just tend to use them for hotels because I found that they're cheaper, even though I'm like a member and I use utilize other ones before I have found the cheapest deal as an avid traveler off of Priceline. Now also remember you could save deals based on other things. Like if you're a veteran, if you're doing official travel. Okay. Yeah. The Northeast Jet blue is probably the easiest option because they're, the cheapest in the leg room is amazing from what I heard on their flights. Well, let's say I want a hotel for Hollywood Nights. Okay, so I think Hollywood Nights is like June 11th to June 13th, right? And I'm going to look Santa Claus, Indiana. All right, guys, this is what I look at. Now, if it's going to show me everything that's available here based on here. It is Santa. Santa Claus, Indiana. <laughs> You're so funny. All right. Anyways, uh, you can kind of see the prices are kind of high for some reason right now. So here's a little gimmick that I use here. So... You're going to notice here that the prices are higher right now. And uh, I'm going to tell you why. What hotels don't want you to know is that if you book further in advance, you're most likely going to pay a higher amount of money. 
as you get closer to your trip, keep on paying attention to these prices because 90% of the time, they're going to drop down to a lower rate. And I can't really show you the different prices right now because what's going to happen is it's February is not a busy traveling month, usually. March is. But since we're pretty close to the traveling days in March, I guess I could bring up the traveling days in March and we could just look at like, I don't know. We'll just look at Orlando or something. So you kind of see the price differences in here, but Orlando, no, I don't want Orlando, West Virginia. What in the world? So I'm going to look over here in March. It's a busy time around Orlando, so I imagine the prices will be a little higher, but you kind of see how these rates do as soon as you use them more. You don't want the Marriott Center. The Marriott Center is always going to be more expensive, but you can see the different prices that you're getting on this. So they tend to give me better deals on here. But let's say I want to know what all the deals are for a normal traveler. So I'm not a VIP member of here. I recommend Priceline because I've been using it for a while. And if you use it, you book one hotel, you book two hotels, you know, you keep on adding up. They give you huge discounts on everything. Uh, whereas I found out hotels.com didn't really give me it. But after, you know, so many stays, I got a whatever hotel room I wanted. Uh, but they have something on here. If you look at Priceline. And you don't have to have this VIP thing, but they're going to give you a rate here. So they have something here. I don't know what's going on with this thing. Oh, okay. I guess I was looking it up in a different. Sorry about that, guys. It popped it up in two different windows, and I don't know why. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? I'm over here going in a different window here. Okay, so you can see kind of what I'm booking here. Okay, so they have something on here if it ever loads here. And uh, it's called Express Deals. And let me show you how you can narrow it out. Oh, my God, it's doing it again. Hold on. Give me one second here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this screen over here with you guys. It keeps on clicking out of it and then bringing me, I don't know, it's acting weird. Anyways, you can see over here, Express Deals. So this is like for March, right? So you can see here, um, and look at this. This is what I look at when I do Express Deals. It's going to tell you the rating, the customer rating what kind of star hotel it is and the area that it's listed at. Okay. I apologize uh, if there's background noise here. It's going to tell you all the ratings on here. So let's say here you three star hotel, international drive, three star hotel, universal Orlando resort, Orlando area. So you can narrow it down what it is here just by the ratings here. And I'll show you. We click out of this now. Jeez, this thing's annoying tonight or today. I apologize, guys. Sync. She said hi. You're so hyper. No. Give me a few minutes here. Shh. Why? You're being too long. All right. So it's going to bring up like Universal Orlando area. So you're going to be able to see, unless this thing clicks out of here again. So if you zoom in in this area over here, it's going to show you. And you can do this with any city, okay? This isn't just this area. So this is a Universal Orlando Resort area, right? I'm going to zoom in here. Hurry and what? So, anyways, uh, 
I apologize. I'm having a little bit of a brain fart here, but uh, I'll bring it up here in just a second. So basically, you'll look. Okay, so if you look at a map, you're going to do the express deals. It's going to tell you like the customer rating. Uh, so if you look at the customer uh, rating and you look at the style of the hotel and the area that it's in, if you look at a normal hotel map with the normal prices on it, it'll be able to tell you what you can narrow down what hotel it is. Uh, obviously, a three-star hotel with a nine-plus rating, it'll actually narrow it down to that, and you'll be able to tell exactly what hotel they're probably going to give you when you book the express deal. Now, remember, the express deals are on any other site like Expedia, whatever they call theirs. The only problem with that, you have to make sure that you're not going to cancel your traveling dates because if you do, you're going to lose your money on that. So if you don't want to deal with any of that and you want to just pay it outright or pay it, you know, pay later, there's always that option as well. But I always use Priceline, TripAdvisor, uh, Google's another good source of that. And that'll help save you money on hotels. And then also you can do ACE discounts or discounts from your work. There's another great thing called work or tickets for work or whatever it's called. And they give you a discount. The only problem is they're going to want the payment up front. Depending on what style of hotel you want, you're going to pay based on whatever star rating you have. I always recommend two and a half stars or above because you're going to get a better hotel that way. And uh, it's going to usually be in an area if you could afford to stay in a resort hotel. But if you're booking on a budget, you're not trying to stay at a, a budget hotel. Now, you have to remember in some of these cities, they might charge you a resort fee on top of it. So always pay attention to that as well. Also, a daily parking fee. So like Orlando, a lot of the hotels here require a daily parking fee, a resort fee. So it does add up. So do remember that when you're booking that. I stayed at the Marriott Center and liked it. Golf course and everything is crazy. Yeah, it depends on your budget. So if you're book booking at like a low budget, medium budget, sure, uh, your options might be a little less, higher budget, so forth. But you can price out everything based on the prices that you're looking at. Like I was trying to break it down earlier. And let's say you only want to spend $1,200 on a four-day trip to Orlando, which, you know, is a lot of money. So let's let's say you just want to spend like five or $700. You have to obviously add in the ticket prices to where you're going. So if you have season passes, that exits that out. But then you have to budget out food. So remember, budget out food, your flight. If you're going to rent a car, which I'll you can go anywhere and rent a car. I recommend Avis for renting cars just because Avis has a better rate than a lot of other companies. Just recommend that you use a credit card because if you use a credit card, you're going to get a lower rate and it's going to be a lot cheaper. Uh, now, if you choose, you know, you like Enterprise, you like Hertz, and you like spending more money on rentals, that's fine. That's your choice. I just recommend Avis because it's more budget friendly. There are obviously cheaper options than that. But I recommend Avis because I've had good luck with them. I've done Enterprise, I've done Hertz, I've done all of them. And I think Avis, in my opinion, is the easiest to use. And they do the no contact process. Enterprise is still having agents following you out there trying to sell you insurance. By the way, if you're doing any type of travel insurance, hey, Montu, if you're doing any type of insurance, I recommend going through Alliance. Alliance actually does really good policies on this. So... I think when I was looking at rental cars and so forth, uh, but they do, it's called Alliance Travel ins Insurance.com. You just tell them the dates that you're traveling, the country, the dates, the age, the state of residence, and the total trip costs. And they will give you the overall insurance that they'll cover. So if anything happens on your trip, it's covered. Now, if you just want to cover a rental car through them, which you can, uh, it's usually like $30 a week. Save yourself some money. Don't blow your money on that stupid per day or just keep the insurance through your rental car or through your own insurance because they're going to try to sell you insurance that's 15 to $25 a day and try to claim, oh, it covers everything. That's wonderful. But if the rental car is $40 a day and then they're trying to upcharge you another 15 to $25 a day, now all of a sudden your rental car cost is going up $25 a day times five so you have to add that in the equation or you can pay thirty dollars for your alliance travel thirty to forty dollars they cover up to i think twenty thousand dollars worth of damages on these cars plus you're covered for thirty dollars a week so you do the math on that if you're booking a plane ticket alliance travel is a lot better if you are unsure and you want to have trip insurance uh, AllianceTravelInsurance.com. Let me bring it up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. You can see that I'm not. 
And I'm not getting paid, by the way, because it's just stuff that I use as an avid traveler. And oh, my bad. Alliance. Okay, go high then. <laughs> All right. I think a lot of people are getting sick and tired of listening to what I'm saying, spieling, but I mean, if you stuck through most of this, you guys probably got most of the information. So I'm sharing with you Alliance Travel. So if you made it this far, this video is almost over here. We're getting to the end of the live feed. You can see right here, we're going to do Alliance Travel here. So here I go. Look at this. You want to get a quote here? Where am I going? Country or destination? USA. Age of Traveler. 35. I don't know why I just did that. Must have the number lock off. 35. Total trip car. Okay, so I'm doing a rental car here. So it's going to ask me total trip. I don't know why it's doing that with the rental car. I don't know. But if I say 200 travel dates, and then I'm traveling. Friday to that Monday, state of residence. Hmm? It'll give me a quote right here. $28 or $7 per calendar day. So you see how it's much cheaper if you're renting a car. So you tell them the total rental car costs or your total trip costs. So let's say you have a total budget of like 500. But when they're asking for total costs on the, you just give them the total costs on how much the rental car is costing you. So it's costing you $7 a day here. And this is covering. So in Washington, obviously, it's not going to cover much. Rental car damage and theft insurance and purchase part of the annual plan is not available to these residents. Terms and conditions apply. And they'll give you all the terms and conditions, but I highly recommend this. So there you go right here. And they give you extra things for when you travel. It's just a good thing to have. Uh, just for extra times and things of that nature. What is this thing doing? Oh, okay. It's like we've got four on YouTube and two on Facebook. So welcome. And that kind of concludes this. So I kind of went over how we save money on going to the parks. Oh, yeah. Also, I would add in, buy an, buy an all-day dining deal. If you plan on being at a park all day, buy the dining deal. Like at Cedar Fair Parks, it's every hour and a half. Sea roll parks is every hour, and Six Flags is the crappiest out of all of them. You get afternoon and evening, unless you do the all day dining there. Then the all day dining, I think you get to purchase so many there. All right, Coaster Key. Yeah, I I have a Universal Pass, so yeah, if you're down here, definitely hit uh, Midwest Coaster fans up, and I if I'm available, I'll be happy to meet up with you and ride it that goes with anybody on here like i am and our whole team is willing to meet anybody just message us personally or email us we are kind of busy when we go to parks because we're filming vlogs and stuff like that and we're covering like our, our main goal this year is to cover off ride povs and stuff like that and on ride povs so uh, that's always a thing there and uh as you get to the end of this video uh tomorrow night we don't know if we're going to change the show to during the day or at night, but tomorrow we're going to have our podcast for roller coaster therapy. And, and uh, it's going to, our roller coaster therapy show is going to be Kings Island versus Six Flags Great America tomorrow night. So join us. Uh, we'll have the time posted early in the morning on that. So pay attention to YouTube. Uh, we're also on Twitch for that. And also pay attention to Facebook, and if you guys haven't already, uh, you could also listen to it. If you go to Spotify, iTunes, anywhere there's a podcast, you just type in Roller Coaster Therapy. All of our episodes are on there. 
And uh, remember, YouTube has a new function on here. So if you look at the bottom for our live feeds, it's called Super Chat. If you'd like to support the channel in the future, please hit Super Chat. It'll pop up on my menu on uh, YouTube, and I'll give you a shout out. We're going to have, we're not going to be using Patreon. We decided we're going to use a different thing, and it's going to give you exclusive coverage of stuff that nobody else on here is going to be able to see right away. You'll get a, a sneak peek at a lot of different things before everybody and we'll be able to, you'll be able to chat and communicate with us on certain matters. Um, but yeah, with that being said, guys, thanks for joining in. Thanks for everybody who joined in. I know there was a total of like 19 at one point kind of dwindled down a little bit. Thanks for joining me for this hour. I hope you guys learned a lot. I'll, we'll definitely have more of these videos in the future on how to save money and going on different trips and travel. Uh, remember, the most important thing is when you're budgeting for a trip is first, know your budget. Second, know your timeline. Third, you're going to start looking up different options based on your budget. And then fourth, obviously, you're going to plan and purchase it. And then fifth, just enjoy the trip. But if you wonder why how I go on all these trips and travel, I'm doing it more so if you wonder how I do trips, I do it more so because or I, I'm able to do it because I plan it out in advance. Like I went to Great Adventure last year. I planned it out only like a week and a half in advance, and I was able to go there and back for, I think, $400 or less. That includes hotel, flight, rental car, food, and uh, pier park. So... I mean, whatever your budget is, you can plan a trip out for. You just have to do it the smart way, break it down. If you need to save like over the next six months, I mean, just set aside $20 a week. I mean, that's, you know, $80 a month times six. You do the math. You could do a trip for $480 at $20 a week savings. So just remember all that. All right, guys, have a great rest of your Monday. Stay safe out there in that snowstorm. We'll be live here tomorrow for Roller Coaster Therapy. Thanks again for watching and have a great one until next time.